Well, the eyes and the ears of the world have been on the climate summit that was held this week in Dubai, the COP28. And for the first time in this summit's history, there was a clear commitment to transitioning away from fossil fuels. And the aspiration remains to limit the global warming to one and a half degrees Celsius. But how are we actually going to achieve that? The over 8 billion people on Earth consume a huge amount of energy every year. We need energy in everything we do, from food production and industry to transport, home heating or cooling. Most of the energy we use today, over 80%, is still produced from fossil fuels. In fact, despite us building more and more renewable energy production, that percentage has not changed much in the past 10 years. And the total amount of hydrocarbons used globally has, in fact, increased. And it is still increasing as the global population keeps growing. Transitioning away from fossil fuels means that we need to build alternative forms of energy production such as wind or solar power, nuclear power or hydrogen-based energy production. But even at this summit, there still wasn't a proper discussion on how we are going to resource this transition. Because to build the non-hydrocarbon-based energy production is going to demand metals in particular. Regardless of what forms of energy production we use to replace fossil fuels, all of them are going to need a wide range of metals and elements to build. For example, a wind turbine requires things like iron, cobalt, copper, chromium and manganese, along with rare earth elements. Solar panels, likewise, need many different metals such as copper, zinc, silver, lead and cadmium. So we are effectively moving from hydrocarbon-based economies to metal-based economies. The timeline here is the key. If we want to limit global warming to one and a half degrees, we need to cut carbon emissions by more than 40% by 2030. So we really need to accelerate the rate of building low carbon energy infrastructure. The current rate is simply not fast enough because the global use of hydrocarbons is not going down. And there's another problem. COP28 for the first time started discussions on how the energy transition is going to be financed, but there still was no discussion on where the actual resources are going to come from. There is still an underlying assumption that the metals and resources are simply going to be available to us when we need them. But that is not necessarily the case. There has been a lot of research going on into how much more metals a fast energy transition would require compared to the amount of metals we use today. And although the exact numbers vary slightly, all the research shows that a fast energy transition requires a significant increase in metal supply. For example, to build solar power alone, the demand for most metals needed for photovoltaic cells is going to increase by several hundreds of percent, according to the World Bank. So it is very likely that a faster rate of building green energy would also mean that we need to mine more metals than we do today, as the current production and recycling rates won't be able to meet the increasing demand. But mining and metal production isn't easy to ramp up. You can't just turn on the tap and get more metals out of the ground. What's more, it typically takes at least 15 years from discovery of a deposit to a mine actually opening. So the availability of the resources and particularly metals that ultimately enable the fast energy transition may well prove to be a bottleneck that does not really seem to be considered. So governments need to urgently start also thinking about and discussing 
resourcing of the energy transition, not just the principles of doing it, but actually where are we going to get those metals from? Governments globally need to find ways to support sustainable and responsible mining in their respective countries. And there also needs to be more support into the education of people with relevant expertise and skills, such as geoscientists and mining engineers.